Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel where we discuss all things Canvas. In case you're new here, my name is Lauren, also known as the Canvas Queen. In today's episode, we are going to be looking at rubrics. Rubrics in Canvas is an amazing tool for teachers, especially for those of you wanting to cut down your grading time. I'm going to show you in this video how to create a rubric, how to attach a rubric to an assignment, and then how to use rubrics to evaluate student work. Now, before we get into the meat and potatoes of this video, if you would subscribe, stay a while, and also give a like to this video, I would greatly appreciate it. Now let's get to it. So in order to utilize rubrics, we of course need to create one or set one up. So in order to do that, we have to enter one of our courses and then access the rubrics. So I'm just going to go into my demo course, but of course you could go into any course and create a rubric. And then on the side here, so this is just a very basic course, no homepage, nothing, just simple module stuff, but we're going to go to the course navigation and click on rubrics. And you'll see there is one that is created in here. And just kind of to give you a basic overview of what they look like, you have the title, and then there's three main sections, the criteria, the rating, and then the point value. So, of course, I could edit this rubric at any time, or if I no longer need it, I could delete it. But we're going to go back to rubrics by clicking it. And over in the right corner here, we're going to click add a rubric so I can walk you through the process of creating one. So this is essentially like the template that you use to create and attach rubrics to your Canvas assignments. So we can add a title. I'm just going to do a basic title. We'll just call it a reading guide. Then of course we have our three sections as mentioned before uh, to edit each section. So to edit criteria, we click on the pencil. To edit a rating, we click on the pencil. And to change the point value, I can just remove the number and then add a different number. And you'll see when I click off of it, it changes that five to an eight. So let's just real quick We'll go in. So I just am going to change. I usually for like a criterion or criteria, I don't really add a super long description. I usually, let's just, I put like a title. So we can put criterion number one and click update. And then here within the ratings, I am going to add more of the descriptions. I like to add them into the ratings portion of the rubric. So click on the pencil again. It says full marks as like a title. This is where I actually write the description. You of course can add a longer description down here, but I have one actually ready to go. So let's hit update and I'll read it for you. 100% complete with good effort shown. Sentences are complete and grammatically correct. So this is like the student responded to a question and they got it correct, right? So then we can add another point value and change it. So I don't want to do 50% yet. Let's say I want to do a six out of eight points. So since a six it, out of eight is 75%, they're going to get partial credit. So here is what I have written, partially complete with good effort shown, few written errors. And then we can go to a 50%, which is a four out of eight. I can do math. <laughs> and then I'll enter in my rating here. So we have 100% complete, partially complete, with good effort shown, few written errors. Then we have partially complete, poor effort. And then the last one, which would be a zero, we will put here, instead of no marks, no attempt was made. So they didn't try, they submitted a blank document, or they didn't submit anything at all. Of course, you can change these to your liking. I just did something very basic and simple to show you as an example. But let's say I want to add another criteria. We would actually click the plus button, criterion, and it will add. Now you have the option to either do a completely new one, 
which will, if I click it, I'll show you. It will, we'll just say uh, criterion number two, create, and it is blank um, and it auto generates the score. Or when we click it, we have the option to duplicate criteria one or criteria two. So I can then make, let's say criteria three can be identical to criteria one. And we can alter this to our liking until we click, and I'm actually going to get rid of number two and make this number two. And we can click create rubric. And that's pretty much how you create a rubric. Before I move on and show you how to add this to an assignment, let me click the edit button. So we're going to alter this a little bit because there's just one thing that I didn't mention, and that is the ranges. So when you're grading, right now, since I don't have these checked off, the you really only have the option to click eight, six, or four. Eight, six, or four to generate the score. If you click a range, you will see that it alters the um, numerical score. So instead of, let's say that they didn't get 100%, but they weren't really a six, you know, a six out of eight, you could click this and put a seven out of eight instead. So it just kind of is more flexible, um, definitely an option, but most of the time I actually leave it unchecked. But I just thought I'd show you that real quick. So we've learned how to create a rubric. Now let's see how we can attach the rubrics to an assignment. So here I am, I'm just on my modules page. I have two demo assignments here. Well, one assignment, one discussion board. I'm gonna click on the assignment and scroll down and you'll see that there is a add rubric button right here. Now when you click on it, you can actually create a rubric right within the assignment. That is an option. You don't have to go to rubrics, create the rubric there, and then attach it later. That option, of course, is fine, but um, you can also create one right here. But the best feature about attaching a rubric into an assignment is using the find a rubric. Now, when you click on this button, it is like, Mwah. It's, you know, chef's kiss magic because it will show you every rubric that has been created within every course that you are assigned to. So let's say that you and another teacher are sharing a course together or you are an assistant in another course of some kind. You can actually go to that other course. Let's just say for today, it's Science 8, and you can go through all of the rubrics within the other course and bring it over into this course's assignment. We are going to go find the rubric that we already created. So we click on this. We can see this is the title of my course, and then here is the rubric that we just created. So then we're going to click use this rubric. So I can view it here to make sure that it's correct and then click use this rubric. And there you go. Now I've attached this rubric to this assignment. In order for it to be usable, meaning when I use it to evaluate my students and it calculates a point, you do have to click the edit button and then check off the box that says use this rubric for assignment grading. Oh, and also don't forget to click change. And there you go. So now we have a total points of 16. I'll even show up right here the point value of this assignment is 16 points. So real quick, I want to show you how you can add a rubric to a discussion board. Pretty simple, same kind of steps as an assignment, just kind of in different places. So you're going to go over on a discussion board to the three dots in the top right corner, and then it's going to say show rubric. You're going to click this and you'll notice there's no rubric. So we're going to add a rubric by finding the rubric again, 
This is actually the rubric. It's already selected the one that I want, Driving Questions Discussion Board. And we're going to click Use It. And then there you go. Now I have the rubric attached to the discussion board. All right, so now I've shown you how to attach rubrics to an assignment. I've shown you how to attach it to a discussion board. Let me show you now how to use them to evaluate student work. So, of course, when we are grading students, we use the speed grader. So we're going to click on the speed grader, and you will notice over on the right side. So the right side is where the grading takes place, the evaluation takes place. The left side of the page in the speed grader is where the student work is. I am going to pull this over just so it's more visible, and we're going to click View Rubric. The rubric that's attached will pop up. We're going to click. So I'm going to select, let's say uh, they got five points here. And let's say they got partial points here. It's going to add those point totals. We'll click save. And then we get the total score posted here. And then I would just click on to the next student and do the same thing. This saves you as a teacher so much time when you're grading student work. And I think one of the best things also using rubrics is you don't have to just use them on a computer. You can also use it on your iPad, which makes it even faster. Well, I hope you were able to see in this video how rubrics utilized the appropriate way can be such a time saver for you, the educator. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm so excited to be back on YouTube. And of course, I have a new studio. Let me know in the comments what you think about it. I am going to attempt to keep it, maybe change it up. I don't know yet. Let me know, give me your feedback. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, and also, of course, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me either in the comments below or you can message me directly on any of my social media platforms. All right, guys, I'll see you on the next one and bye.